Hey everybody and happy fall question mark. Here if you look behind me it looks very fall as you can see some of the leaves are changing colors, there's a wind blowing, there's rain, and it's like 73 degrees. So it's really weird. Um, but anyhow we're going to concentrate on some aut how do you say it? Autumnal? Anyhow some fall goodies is what we're going to do. So be sure to say hey and let me know you're here because it makes me really happy. Rob, you're so sweet. Rob is here and I know somebody else, a few other people are. So what I thought we would do today is we would break down a butternut squash. So a butternut squash. Your, your mileage may vary. I tend to, when I'm buying a butternut squash, so this bottom bulbish half is the part that's going to have seeds. All of this in the neck is going to be solid. So what's cool if you get one that's longer like this, I know I have a lot of solid squash. And so I also often just go ahead and slice them and you can use them like burgers or you can make them kind of like roasted butternut squash steaks. and. One of the things I like is like this Earl Grey tea rub that I've used on it, but you can make your own if you want a salt-free blend. And it's mostly Earl Grey tea and pepper, black pepper, which gives it kind of mm, an added a little bit of rosemary and sage. So you can do that without any oil or salt at all. Okay, so I'm going to show you the hard way which is not that hard. Now, one thing to know is I got this squash at Trader Joe's last week. So the skin is still pretty moist. It's not like it's fresh picked moist, but it's not all hard and gourd like. So if yours is hard and gourd like, I do not recommend trying this method because we're going to peel it and cut it up. So that's one of the ways that you can do it. Now, if you have bad wrists, or you have some other issues too, you can fit the whole thing, or in this instance, we probably cut it in half to put it in the Instant Pot, but let's pretend this is a smaller one. You can just poke holes in it, put it in your um, slow cooker, and let it cook all day while you're at work. And, and then when you come back, you let it cool. Then you cut it down the middle and scoop out the seeds, and then the flesh is you just scoop out with a spoon and it's it's already really a puree because it's cooked down so much. So if you have any wrist issues, that's the easiest way to do it. Or if you have a really old squash and you could do that with any of the winter squashes. You can do it with pumpkins or pie pumpkins, acorn squash, although acorn squash, we tend not to peel and separate because the, the flesh isn't really as um, abundant in those, but you still could do something like that. I typically cut those in half and stuff them is what I do. Um, hi, Liz. Oh, yay. It's so good to have you on the live today. Okay, guys, so we're going to get going with this. And if you have any questions as we go along, please ask. I'm going to do the overhead. <laughs> so one of the things that I keep playing with, and I'm not sure how much you can see, is there's still some of the sticker. The sticker just really stuck on. Um, so I've washed it really well with um, soap. But anyhow, we're peeling this off, so I'm not worrying much about it, but in case you were wondering. And you're always going to have some little dings and some little places that looks like it's not perfect. And that's okay, because it's not perfect. So the first thing I want to do is slice off this top part. So when I'm peeling, I'm just not even fooling with it. So I typically take a sharp knife that's kind of large. Okay, now this one wasn't that hard. And you can see kind of how moist that is on the inside. So that makes it easier. And see, we've got a little thing here. What I'll do is when I peel it, I'll make sure that I peel that part out or I'll come back and cut it. So next, seriously, I'm just peeling it. And again, as long as this is not a big hot mess that's hard, if it's hard and you can't do this, 
there's either one of two things happening. The first thing could be that you need a new peeler because it might just not be sharp enough. The other thing could be that it's old and woody so that it's just too tough to do that. And then again, what you're going to do, and you can do it even if you peeled a little bit, is you're going to take that whole squash or cut it in half so it fits into your Instant Pot or your slow cooker, and you're going to cook it in there. Does that make sense? So a lot of it, just kind of like, and see there's where that spot is? So I wanted to keep going for that. And I'm just moving some of these as I go. Now probably what I'm going to do, I like, I often cut this in half, or cut it where the bulbish part is with the seeds. But right now, it's helping me hold this a little bit better. And so that's one of the reasons I'm just leaving it. And I think the first time that you're trying to do this, that's a good idea. And remember, and so see, this is the hard way, right? Oh, all that peeling, I can't possibly do it, right? We just did this whole top part almost in five minutes. Probably less than that, because I've been yabbering. And hey, everybody, as you come on, say hi. Let me know where you're from and if it feels like fall, where you are, because it does not here. <laughs> and I would like it to. So I'm going to let me go ahead and get a little bit more of this off. So I could still go ahead and just turn it the other way. And even though this is kind of moist and wet and a little slippery, I'm able to hold on to it. It's not that bad. You could also, and I'm getting one, get a clean dish towel, and you can also put that here, and that will also help hold it if it's slippery. And I hate peeling these things, even though it's more in my head than anything. Like, see, it's, it's no harder than peeling a potato. Hi, Jacqueline! Yeah, it's going to be almost 90 there. We can still enjoy our fall vegetables as we're going along with this. But, yeah, it's, it's like 75 here today. But it was really cold just the other day. And so you can always take this, reposition it, hold it. And if you, this, I have to say, this peeler is kind of old, so it's not super great. I have a new one from Idaho Potatoes that I snagged while I was in Florida, and I need to find where we pack them, because I peel a lot of potatoes, and I bet you do too. And if you can peel a potato, you can peel a squash. And remember, there's also, I'm going to go ahead now and cut this end off. You could be super thrifty and not do that, but I'm really not losing very much. I mean, really. And it just makes my life easier. And sometimes that's okay. So now I'm going to just finish up these ends. Oop, I can grab it. There we go. So you do have to push down a little bit harder than you do when you're peeling a potato. And it, because I'm so short, I'm doing this at about chest level. If you can do it um, where it's a little bit lower, your upper body strength will take up a little more of the slag. And you can decide to peel it in a different way if you want. This is just the way I find easiest and less frustrating. Because... That way I got to see all this was coming off, and then in the end we just did it in two steps. I usually like to just try and get the ends, this end part after I cut off the very base end, because that way it's easy to do. Okay, so I'm going to guesstimate the seeds are probably about in here, and I'm going to cut the neck of the squash off, and we'll see if I'm guessing right. This knife is fairly sharp. Um, I find that having the bigger chef's knife is a little easier. I typically work with a smaller one, but being able to really hold that there and 
try and cut a little more with the back side, that makes it go a lot easier. Okay, so this guy is totally solid. And you can sort of just barely see where the seed stuff was just starting right there. And so again, you can see that right there. And see how it's squishy? And you might be able to see some of the seeds in there. So we're going to cut this guy in half. And this is the bottom part. And it's not always as clearly marked as this is. So if you have a real skinny top part and a fat, bulbous bottom part, it's pretty easy to notice. So what we want to do, this is the seeds and the guts, right? And just like a pumpkin, you can take a spoon, and I don't want to be misleading, because you are using some power behind this. You're scraping some flesh out. It's not just, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what it would be like. It's not just like scooping potatoes or something like that after they've been cooked. This is hard on the inside. And so see, I'm using some force. If there's a little bit of guts or stuff like that, it's okay, or you can be extra and take it all out. It's edible. And in fact, you could save these seeds and you could toast them and eat them or put them on salads. So that's something else you can do. So I'm holding it and I'm digging in. Is it kind of the same consistency of a pumpkin? Yes, it is. So Cheryl's here working today. And she just said, is it kind of the same consistency as the pumpkin? And it is. So this flesh part is very firm and stiff. And this is not as firm. But it's still attached. See how it's attached there? And if I just move it with my finger, it's not coming out. So I really am taking my spoon and scooping just a little bit of that flesh off to get all of this away. And sometimes, like right now, it's easier if I take some of this out so I can see what I really need to get working on. And another reason I like the squashes that are like this is this is usually pretty small. Um, and this is a great way to start breaking down squash. Butternut, I think, is easiest. Um, with delicata or acorn, you can actually eat the skin so you don't need to peel those. Um, again, unless they're hard or have a lot of real ugly spots on them, but typically I avoid that at all costs so that I don't have to peel them. And this is how you would do, you could do a pumpkin as well. Okay, actually let me get a little more of this out. I think I stopped a bit too soon. And do you guys have any questions about that so far? Have any of you been breaking down squash, either this year or before? Because I'd love to know. So then what I do is I tend to just take this and put it over this way because I feel like it's a little bit more secure. Although once it gets to this end part, I've got to be a little careful because it's not going to be as secure. And I'm going to just cut down. And it's not that hard to cut again because it's it's fairly moist. And what you can do even is we could go here and that'll make it a little more secure. Okay. So then you can take a couple of these. I tend to not make them exactly the same. If if you want it to cook at exactly the same speed, it's better if it is the same. But seriously, I'm not going to worry about this little bitty piece. It's not going to mess up everything, and except for me thinking about it. I think it messes up more of my life that way. And also, no, I'm not showing you this to give you any kind of shame about buying it already cut up. There's nothing wrong with buying it already cut up, especially if you have wrist issues. Um... Or sometimes you can only find it in the freezer section or already cut up. Right now you can find it everywhere. 
And at Trader Joe's, you usually can find all three. You can find a whole one like this, which I think was $2.99. And Trader Joe's is my favorite place to get winter squash because you get you pay by the piece and not the pound. So you can get, get the biggest one you can find so you're getting more for your money. Whereas if it's in a little bag, it's usually, it's usually the same price for maybe like a third of what you would get. Sometimes a quarter, depending on how big the squash you could have gotten is. Um, now obviously, if using a knife at all is an issue, then that's better than not having butternut squash at all. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to show you today because somebody asked me in another class I was doing how to break it down, and I thought in that class they would have already done that, so I thought maybe some of you guys would like to know too. So I'm going to keep cutting this puppy up. My dogs say hello to all of you. They've missed seeing you. <laughs> um, and Elizabeth says there's more nutrients in the frozen if you buy it cut. And that's probably because it's like a lot of frozen vegetables are actually frozen when they're picked. So yeah, there's, there's no shame in that game at all. And what you can do too is you can lightly steam this or blanch it and you could freeze this. And sometimes I do that, but also sometimes I just think about what I'm going to use it in. And I've been trying to think of a few different butternut squash dishes I want to do. And hopefully this week I'll have up some butternut squash refried beans for the Instant Pot. And so I mean this is this is a significant amount. Let me get a measuring cup and kind of get an idea. Okay. You know, the kind of knife, this knife is sharp and it's actually, um, can you, oh, there we go, Kefalon. There was um, a set of knives that I got at a conference and they actually, it's forged, but there's like a little, um, a little knife sharpener in each um, little space for the knife in the in the knife block, and so it keeps pretty sharp. Um, I like those a lot. They've lasted me for a number of years. I may have to finally get my smaller knife sharpened professionally a little bit, but. I use it a ridiculous amount over the past few years, and that's the one I use the most. Okay, so let's go. This is a four cup measuring cup. Yeah, I think I eyeballed it pretty good. Yeah, it's about four cups, between three and four cups. And that's just the neck part, right? So the other one we could cut up just the same or we can go ahead and cut it for rounds, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'll show you that too. And so again, you can hold this with a towel to help it not slip. Also, if you find that your cutting board slips, mine doesn't on this surface, you can put a towel underneath it, between it and the counter as well. And so those are all like good safety tips. Um, my hands are really small, so sometimes my fingers will be where they're not supposed to be. Um, if you can curl your fingers up when you're cutting, my arm and wrist is not strong enough to hold things like this, especially something this big, which is why I'm holding it like that. So if you're going to hold it like that, you want to hold it away from the knife. That's why I have it a little bit back further. Hi, Sheila. You, yes, you must have joined a little bit later. Yeah, we um, we peeled the whole squash first. We cut off both ends. Then we cut off the neck of the squash, and we took the seeds and the guts out of the bottom part, the little bulbish part, and that's what we cut up, and we got four cups out of. So, so yes, 
Um, and also, if, just in case a few more, actually more of you are on. So I'm showing you how to do it the supposed hard way. It's not that hard, but if you have any wrist issues or your knives aren't very sharp or whatever reasoning, A, you can buy that already pre-cut in the store, either in the frozen section or sometimes actually in the regular vegetable section. And you can also take the whole squash, ends and peel and all just the way it is, wash it up really good, poke some holes in there, put it in your slow cooker, you don't have to put anything else in there and let it cook for eight hours on low, then let it cool down. Then it's going to slice, you're going to slice it right through the middle after it's cooled. So you're going to put it on the cutting board or you can put it sideways and cut it down, but you're going to cut it down the middle and then you're going to scoop out the seeds and the guts. And then what you're going to do is actually just scoop out the flesh and you're going to use it more of like a puree. Okay, great, Sheila. And tell me if you have any other questions or if what I just said didn't make a lot of sense. You can also do that in your Instant Pot, but it's easy in the slow cooker, too, so either way. Alrighty. So, I, I was saying earlier, too, I like to get ones that have a lot of neck because then I can use these as butternut squash burgers or steaks. Okay, so again... I'm going to put this here to help hold it. And one thing I do sometimes, and these aren't going to be perfect because I'm totally not perfect. And this end isn't perfect already, right? So this one's maybe not going to be, and this is the best way to do it. And this one isn't perfect, but you know what? It's totally not bad. And you can decide that's about what I want. You could even mark it if you wanted to so that they're all the same size. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to guess, because I'm a rebel. You guys remember that in the Pee Wee Herman movie? That's the kind of rebel I am. Pee Wee Herm Herman rebel. Oops. And see, that one's not perfect. So what I could do with it is I could cut it up and put it in here. So if you have any of these that you're just not happy with, probably what I'll do is just cook it anyhow, and I'll eat it. Um, but if it's something you're not happy with, with these steaks, and I served these um, for my Halloween party this weekend, and I put on um, a blend of seasoning that had Earl Grey tea, and some other things in it. Oh yeah, and Elizabeth is reminding us all that um, you can roast the seeds at 350 till Christmas, or Christmas till crispy. This has been a day. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm still, I'm still trying to get back on track after vacation. But yes, you totally can roast the seeds, and you can put those on salad. You could. Um, there's so many things you could do with those. So it's totally up to you. Um, in mine, there aren't a lot. But maybe I'll pick them out and I'll, use, I'll air fry them or something like that. So let's go back and see these um, squash steaks. Because even though they're not all perfect, I still love them. So, like, most of them are pretty darn close. So I would say these two are odd men out. Really. So, and if I had been more careful, we would have had 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And Brenna says 12 is a good number to have. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, we don't want to roast the seeds all the way till Christmas because I think they would be a little bit burnt and perhaps there would be some issues in your house. So if you're wanting these to happen quick, because I, I was doing dinner for... 14, and so I decided um, this is a big sit-down multi-course dinner party, so I decided to do kind of two mini dinners. So we had um, a roasted corn and red pepper soup that my friend Jenny Field made from Pastry Chef Online that was all vegan. I made some gluten-free vegan cheddar scones to go with that. 
But then I made like some baked beans and that recipe is going to be coming up soon. They were really good with some Beyond Meat sausage and basically um, a mashed potato cake with sauteed cabbage and carrots in it. So that was our first little mini kind of English breakfast sort of. And then I had Earl Grey roasted butternut squash steaks. I had um, vegan gluten-free Yorkshire puddings that I made, a mushroom gravy, and minted peas. So what I did, since that's a lot of food, and then we had dessert. So my friend Linda Watson from Cook From Good, Cook For Good, actually made an apple strudel because it was a Harry Potter party or that world anyhow. So she made a fantastic beast, Queenie's apple strudel, and I made some Earl Grey Niffler shortbread. And, and a Niffler is just, a, if, you're, if you're not familiar, it's just this really cute little animal that looks... It's just adorable, and it steals a lot of things. I think Cheryl may be bringing me something to show you. Um, so it was cut out in the shape of those, and I made some hobnobs, which are just some oat cookies. And I probably will write about those coming closer to Christmas because they seemed like they shouldn't work at all. Okay, here's a niffler. This is our little bag. Isn't he cute? And he's holding a coin because they steal all the shiny things. So... <laughs> So that kind of gives you that. So I cut these in half, and my the neck of my squash wasn't this long. So you can't always count on getting exactly 12, like we did today. But what you can do is, is ahead of time, you can mark that squash and see where you need to cut it. I'm not always so good about doing that. So breaking down the squash was pretty easy. One of the reasons it was easy is because it wasn't really old. And at, the older it gets, the tougher the skin gets, the more dried out it gets, the harder it is to use a knife on, and the harder it is to peel. Um, so that's one reason. And it's not that hard. And it doesn't take that long. Like with me yammering on about all these things and showing you extras, it's taken probably about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes total. Um so do you have any other questions about butternut squash? And please tell me what you're going to make with butternut squash. And I want to see pictures. Uh, on HealthySlowCooking.com, I've got some great butternut squash recipes. I've got one that's a, a butternut squash okra gumbo, and that's one of my favorites. I also have one that's a pasta. It's like an Asian-style pasta with butternut squash and mushrooms and um, baked crispy tofu on it, and that's pretty good too. Uh, but basically what I want you to do is go forth in the world. Don't be afraid of butternut squash anymore. It's not that hard. Uh, don't make the mistake that I do and save them for too long and because they just get harder to break down. So when you get one, and, and I'm not talking about a day or two or a week, because squash can overwinter if, if you dry them really hard but then they're also hard to deal with. So anything like that, put in your slow cooker and just let it do the work for you. And if I don't have any questions, I'm probably gonna go ahead and take off for the day. And I'm gonna be back this month and next month with some more uh, butternut squash recipes and some more uh, fall and winter fruits. Yeah, Brandy, Brandy says she's guilty of saving them too. I know, sometimes I've saved them so long that they're not good at all anymore. They're not just hard. They've got soft again. So, yeah, this is easier. And, like, again, I could just either half cook these or whole cook these, and I could stack them and keep them in the freezer so that instead of making a veggie burger, you can have a butternut squash burger. And, I mean, you can't beat that. There's lots of wonderful nutrients. It's great, it's great color, and it adds just... I love the flavor of it too. Butternut squash, acorn squash, those all have typically a better flavor than pumpkin. I like pumpkin too, but it's not as flavorful. So, okay, so don't save your butternut squash. Go ahead and break them down now. Um, if you make anything with butternut squash or you break your own down, I would love to see pictures. You can leave it um, on any of the Facebook pages or in my private group. Vegan Recipes, Cooking with Kathy Hester, and I'd love to see you guys there. 
Uh, it's a free group. You get lots of tips and you get to answer lots of cool things for me. Like, what did you do with that butternut squash? Yeah, and Brandon's like saying, yeah, freezing it is a good idea. So you can buy it frozen or you can freeze it yourself. So literally, I could, like when, when they say blanch, you're just putting it in the boiling water for just a minute or two and then straining it out. And what that does is it kills any of the stuff that could be associated on here. <laughs> and that's as far as I'm going to go. So it kills some things that can make it rot faster, basically. And that's why you might do that before you put it in, in the freezer. Oh, that's great, Liz, you made me so happy. So Liz says this was the one vegetable she's always wanted to buy, but then she was afraid of it. And it looks like a monster, but it's just really not that bad. And remember, the most important thing is make sure you have a good hold of it. You can use a towel if that helps and take your time. Even if you take your time, it's going to take you less than 20 minutes to break it down. And look at all the food I got for $3. This is for, we're, there's two of us. This is several meals for $3. And I think that's awesome. And be sure when you're at Trader Joe's, check out any of the other vegetables and winter squashes that are by the piece. Also, check and see if they have, anywhere you go, if they have some of those cool, like, um, I don't know what they're calling them now, but like the exotic pumpkins, like the Cinderella pumpkins that are squat. Those Cinderella pumpkins are delicious. So that's something else that you could try. Oh, that's great. Brandy has a good idea. Make a mac and cheese with butternut squash sauce and use it in place of pasta sauce and lasagna. You can totally do that. I have a recipe for Instant Pot um, butternut squash mac and cheese. And I believe that is also on HealthySlowCooking.com. And I don't know what's going outside, but the dogs are very excited. I think the leaves are falling. So have a good fall. Send me some really good fall vibes because I could use them. Oh, you've never heard of Cinderella squash? Oh, they're awesome. Look it up. It's actually, um, it's a French pumpkin is basically what it is. If I go to the farmer's market where people are looking for Cinderella pumpkins, they are quite expensive. If you go somewhere like Trader Joe's where it's like $6.99 and you can have one that's the size of your table sometimes. And again, you can break that down just like this. Um, and if it's too big or intimidating, cut pieces off, then go ahead and peel it. So take it down to whatever works for you. If you get a giant one, you're going to want to freeze some of it, too. You could also just cook some puree and then puree it and freeze it as puree. When I freeze puree, I usually freeze it in one and a half cups because that's about the size of a can. So that way, if you're using a recipe, it gives you a good idea. You're pretty close. Yeah, Cinderella squash is delicious, and and I think they call it Cinderella pumpkin. They're also like blue Hubbard squash, so some of the blue gray pumpkins that you see, um, in with those mixed, like fancy pumpkins at Trader Joe's are Whole Foods, or they have them at other stores now too. The trick is, if if it says by the pound, be sure to weigh it. Same thing with celery root. My one source of celery root per piece is gone. So I went to Whole Foods, and what I usually pay $4 for, I paid $10. $10 for an ugly celery root. Even Max is upset about that. He never wants that to happen again. He thinks it's ridiculous, and so should you. <laughs> okay, this time I really am going. I will see you guys next week, and have a wonderful, wonderful fall.